Now more condemnations pouring over the attack on Benue State Governor Samuel Otum. And the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, maintains its stance on the deregistration of 74 political parties in the country for the Supreme Court and the tail goes. A plus politics starts now. I am Justin Akadoyan. President Mohamed Buhari, just like many state governors, has condemned the attack on Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State, who narrowly escaped death. The discourse this with me is the Chief Press Secretary to the Benue State Governor, Tever Akase, a security expert, Okereke Chinwiki, and a political analyst at the Emisaka. Well, thanks for staying with us. Now, Yemi, let's just start uh, with what happened on Saturday. Uh, the Governor of uh, Benue State, Samuel Otom, was attacked uh, you know, on his way back from his farm uh, between Agboko and uh, you know, Makro D. Way. What does all of this tell you for a prominent personality as a governor, the chief security officer of a state to be attacked by, uh, allegedly by Fulani Hertzman? Uh, it, it just tells you uh, that there's nobody that's safe in this country, um, whether you're a governor, you're a minister, or probably even the president. When I said even the president, because um, in, remember that the Kankaboy's adoption happened when Mamadou Bwabi was in Kasina, in Dara, some kilometers away from Kankara. And I, I keep telling people, say for my choice of words, that um, at every point we come out bragging, you know, that yes, we've conquered these terrorists, we are going to do this and do that. They keep giving the government the middle finger. I, it's, it's sad that um, in, in spite of, um, you probably want to put into consideration the security presence around the, around the governor mm -hmm. and it, the, the guys, could, the terrorists could have the, the confidence to, to take them on. It's spelled doom for Nigeria, it's spelled doom for, it's spelled doom for, for cities, that means there's nobody that's safe. That's just the summation of it. Okay, but looking at it now, if you look at the state in itself, that's been a state. It has, uh, you know, I've had its share of uh, security challenges over the past uh, years. But lately, it seems as though relatively calm, you know, um, actually returns to that particular state. But would you describe this particular development as a recent uh, trend? Well, I, I don't know, but if you probably let's take us back, um, there have been war of words going back and forth between Autumn and uh, that governor in the northern region. Um, Autumn, a lot of people believe Autumn used the security challenges in the state to whip sentiments in his favor, but were those things there? Yes, it was. Yeah. And we we'll we'll would not deny that fact. And this is just, um, I don't know, are they trying to say they are, they are on a revenge mission against the governor? I, I've, I listen, I've listened to a lot of people criticizing, condemning, even um, questioning. Mm. The claims of the governor. If had somebody told, said to me that he has never heard of um, Ed's men claiming responsibility for any attack, then why is this different? And I'm trying to send a reminder to the person that yes, um, Ed's men have, have claimed responsibility for attacks even in Benue State. So it's, um, it's a sad mm. face in our national life. And for anybody that is patriotic, for anybody that means well for this country, it's a sad period in our country. And it still brings us back to the question of what's as the, it's a failure, it's failure of government, and not just failure of government, not Benue State governor or government. It's the federal government. Okay, well, we'll come back to you, Yemi, but let's go to uh, Benue State, uh, where we have the Chief Press Secretary to the governor, uh, Tavir Akase, standing by. Good evening to you, Mr. Akase. Many thanks for joining us on Plus Politics this evening. Uh, can you just uh, run through us again the event of um, Saturday, because a whole lot of people are trying to punch holes and uh, saying that uh, the events are was just uh, over-exaggerated. <laughs> Good evening and thank you for, for having me. Well, you see, uh, we play politics so much in this country with even things that have to do with life and death. Otherwise, 
why will people uh, be looking at this from the, uh, through the lens of politics? Where have we not had cases of attacks in this country since the security situation began to get worse? Now, back to Saturday, uh, the governor was uh, on his farm, which is uh, uh, close to River Benue Banks, and on his way back, the ambush occurred. Now, if you know Benue, uh, Boko Makudi Road is uh, not very far from the, the river banks. That's River Benue. And the terrain from the road to where the farm is located uh, is very difficult for vehicles to access. Uh, which was why the governor had to park his vehicles somewhere off the road and use the remaining part of the journey from the from the roadside to to the farm by foot. You know, so when the attack occurred, uh, luckily uh, his security men who who, who were in front, the uh, the assailants noticed them first and began to to shoot, and that. Uh, alerted those who were very close to him to shield him and repel the attacks till he got out of danger's way. So we are still grateful to God for, for doing this for us. Otherwise, we will we'll be talking, we will be uh, speaking about the difference in now. And we, the governor is really grateful to Nigerians, both home and abroad, for the show of concern. We've received a lot of messages thanking God uh, for his life, for sparing his life on Saturday. Uh, as though Governor Tom is, is truly, truly grateful to... All right, Minister Kase, if I have to butt in here now, let me just um, ask, uh, what's the situation right now in Benue State as regards um, the pause of the people? Because before now, you know, Benue State has had a share of um, insecurity, but uh, a sort of relative calm returns to the state. But with this uh, recent development, would you say it's uh, a new trend uh, in um, security in Benue State? Well, um, it, since the attacks, since the attempt on his life took place last Saturday, uh, Benue has been calm. Uh, they, we, we've been receiving messages uh, by groups and individuals. Uh, what has happened is that um, the people are, are shocked that if the governor of the state can be attacked in this manner, then who is safe? This is the question on the lips of almost every Benoit person. And uh, yesterday, the governor went to church to thank God for sparing his life. The, the atmosphere in Benoit state is that of uh, uh, increased awareness, consciousness of the people in terms of security. Uh, because Benue people have been living with this kind of situation for the past three years, since the January 2018 attacks occurred. Some of our communities are not yet, uh, uh, have not started witnessing full activities in terms of agriculture, in terms of the economy, because many of the people have fled to the IDP's camps. So with what happened last Saturday, uh, the apprehension has taken a new dimension that everybody is now being told to be security conscious. If you see uh, uh, persons in your community that are not familiar faces, please report them to security agencies for Prime Minister Gassé, you rightly said yourself now that the people are actually living in a bit of apprehension. If the governor, in his capacity and in his um, personality, is attacked now, who is responsible for the security of the average farmer in Benue State? Well, you see, security is, is a joint responsibility. No single person. That's why Nigeria has many security agencies. The governor presides over the state security council meeting, which, by the way, held today. And the security council condemned in strong terms what happened on Saturday. And uh, uh, new measures are being put in place. We are expecting the team that the, the inspector general of police has detached, has deployed to Benue to investigate what happened on Saturday. And the governor has expressed his willingness to, uh, to meet with the team 
and all his aides who were with him on that day will also be available to be interrogated by the, the team that is deployed to Benue, and that his government will support fully that investigation, because perhaps that will lead to unraveling, I mean, some of these things that are going on, because there is a forest where this thing happened. And the armed herdsmen are believed to have come out of that forest to carry out this attack. And so uh, Nigeria has many forests, and the armed herdsmen have not hidden their, uh, their, uh, their whereabouts. They have said the forest be belongs to them. Okay. So this is why we, we, we expect that security agencies should uh, go to these forests and comb them. All right, all, all right. Thank you, Mr. Kase. But let's right. just bring in um, security experts uh, right now. Barrister uh, Okereke Chinwike, who is uh, the founder of Afri Law. Uh, good evening to you. Many thanks uh, for joining us. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the development now in Benue State. What with the uh, um, anti-open grazing, which is in force, and uh, the back and forth between uh, the state government and, of course, uh, the leadership of the Miyeti Ala uh, Cattle Breeders Association. They have come out to deny that they are not responsible uh, for this particular attack. But the Mieti, uh, 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 one, one other faction, Mieti Alakata, says and the governor doesn't really like uh, the, the Fulani headsman, that he has a complete hatred for them. You know, there was a meeting uh, sometime last week in Yobe State uh, where they actually said that the governor is their problem. If you were to analyze all of this situation, what would, you, what would be your analysis right now? Yeah, thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so, Frank, with you, what is happening in Benue State is very unfortunate. You know, it's what is it, what is demonstrated that nobody is safe in this country, and it has is also showing that the the security the security in in in, our, in Nigeria now is so what everybody needs to be concerned, and um, the 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 issue and the situation with uh, the governor and the state and the metiala uh, is something that is obvious to everybody. Uh, the the what I will say is that uh, the Metiala is an association that must be law abiding. Nobody shall go the law. According to the rule of law, if there's a law in the state, no matter whether you like the law or not, you are supposed, you are expected to abide with the law. The government of Benue State has passed a law, anti raising law. It doesn't matter whether it's the, you are indirectly or directly affected by that. You are expected to comply about with, with it. So that is the situation in um, the Bedouin state. And it is unfortunate that the association is claiming that the government, government, the government doesn't think like them. There is not, this is not a personal thing. And I don't think the governor has any personal dislike to any group or association. The issue is that he is the chief security officer of the state, and he has the, the mandate, the constitutional uh, mandate, to ensure that the people and life and property of Benue's people is well secure. So that the man is very responsible and is doing his work. All right, that is you. what is his thing. All right, thank so you, Chibike. We'll come back to you right against now. any group. He's not against anybody. All right, we'll come back to you, Chiwike. Let's uh, talk to uh, Yemi uh, Saka for a bit now. Let's still talk about uh, this um, anti-open grazing bill. Do you really see all of this uh, as uh, maybe some sort of um, revenge mission on uh, the governor since uh, he actually brought that particular law into being? No, I, I, I would not want to be speculative because um, if I start to do that, I'll be guilty of what I've been blaming almost everybody with off playing politics with issues of national security, I won't do that. But um, for me, there's something I find, um, I, find, I find and found laughable when the IGP is now um, deploying a crack team to, to Benway State to line up, so if my chairs up, line up um, people with the governor aides to start questioning them. I, with my knowledge of security, especially when it comes to providing security for VIPs, 
the governor has um, his duties with him. He has DSS personnel. He has uh, he had some uh, police men with him. And um, standard protocol. After such attack, they would have gotten back to this to their station or you, where they have, which is the government house. And I've written a report, a CTREP, which have been forwarded to the state command, the state command to the national headquarters of the DSS, and that would have been shared with the NSC and probably shared with Mr. President. So. What, what the, why do you have to start insulting the collective intelligence of Nigeria telling us you are going on a fight finding missions when your personnel on ground have given you a report? Mm. They probably have given you the exact location when it happened, they would have given you because you should trust your men. And with this government that is bearing the burden of incompetence when it comes to handling the issue of um, security and the NSA that's under fire for being negligent and not up to the task as NSA, if Autumn had lied, They'd have probably come out to defend the institution. They'd have come out to defend the presidency. They'd have come out to debunk his claim if he's lying to, def to protect the DSAs and to protect what are every everybody that needs to be protected. So that settles that. Mm -hmm. On the anti-open grazing law, in fact, I, I do want to call it farmers and as clash. It's it's a, it's a, it's a disservice. It's it's um it's inhumane to people who have lost their lives and means of livelihood. It's not farmers that has clash. And I, I, like I said, it's some, it's some headsmen going to people's farmland, destroying it, in, all in the name of grazing. It's not, it's not because their cows were slaughtered or, or probably cattle rustling that got us there. It's because there's a, there's a, the primary cause is people invading people's farmland. I have a friend of mine. Uh, I think he's, he's studying in, in the East and said his projects in his project uh, final year. I think he studied agri economics or one agri um, agricultural course in the university. And they were meant to cultivate a farmland or individually. And some few weeks to the final um, grading of their project, yeah. the farmland has been invaded by, by, by headsmen. And a lot, of, a lot of them feel that thing they have to retake it. So, it's, it's, so if, if, uh, you, you should imagine, you should now see it that I'm not, I'm not making case for revenge. Mm. I'm not making case for people taking laws into their hands. But if you, if you can accept the fact that it is these people, I, I travel by road. There was a time I was going to, I was going to um, Abuja from uh, what have you, Kogi, mm -hmm. on your way to Obajana. And you see these um, headsmen cross their cows or cattle across the road, heading towards Benin, and trying, they are going to walk and trample on people's farmland. That is what, this is what open grazing is all about. It's not about because we hate a tribe yeah. or one ethnic nationality or ethnic nation. We should start, the, you see, when the president came out, I was saying they've blocked the grazing route. In 2020, it shows you how primitive a cake is thinking is. And it's, is that a justification for open grazing? They've blocked grazing route. Yeah. The, 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 the processing plant in Mokwa for dairy products, probably that has been shut down for years. We probably could blame that for shortage of what have you in Nigeria. So we should have more. So, so, so even the, the headsmen now believe they have somebody sympathetic to their cause. They are being shielded. They are being term. shielded because how can somebody be making an argument for blocking of grazing routes when there's increase in population? All right, okay. Let me just hold that for. Let's go back to being restated. I hope Mr. Akase is still there. Uh, let's talk more concerning uh, all of the reactions. I want to get your reaction specifically. The national leadership of the Mieti Allah Katal is asking uh, the Benue State Governor to present proof you know, that uh, he was just lying, that he does not like, you know, that particular aspect that he hates, uh, the fool and the herdsman. I just want to get uh, the reaction of um, the Bernie State government concerning that. Uh, do you mean that uh, the governor should prove that he was attacked? Or That's not? what they are saying, that uh, there should be some sort of a proof to back up his claim according to them. Well, I'm, I, I'm sure you are aware that the fool and nationality movement Punam has stepped forward to claim yes. responsibility. Yes, they have. Over this attack. And in 2018, 
Funam said a similar thing. After the January 2018 attacks on Benue, when uh, 73 people were killed, they met in Kaduna and issued a, a communique at the end of that meeting and said that the attacks on Benue were justified, that there will be revenge. more bloodshed yes, until Benue reverses, until Benue repeals the open grazing prohibition and ranches establishment law. Now, the same group has come out to, uh, to say, to take responsibility. Now, the question is, I think your guest, or my, my colleague, who, who is also uh, from, from, from where, uh, said, um, I think it's your guest in the studio, that the, 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 the governor has security aides who are answerable to their commanders in Benue. And this, now the commanders here are answerable to Abuja. The governor has a chief detail who represents the DSS. He has a, an ADC and an orderly who answer to the police commissioner. And the police comm commissioner's job is to report to the IG in Abuja. This thing happened when these aides were present. Now, their loyalty, first of all, is to their bosses in, in Makudi here. Even before the governor. Yes, their responsibility is to protect him. But when it comes to answering to someone, they are first of all answerable to their commanders in Benue State. Now, if, even if they don't want to tell the truth to Benue people, in-house, they must have reported exactly what happened, if the governor is lying. So I believe the commissioner of police in Benue State, by the way, his PRO issued a statement yesterday confirming the attack on the governor. And the DSS director was also with us the day the governor came to back to government house to address the press. And if Governor Tom has been lying, I believe that the federal government, even if it, to, be, to be looked at it from the, the, the angle of politics, the governor is, is from a different party from the president, in which case, or by the way, which means that the security commanders are answerable to the government of APC. So they should not lie to the president. Even if it means loyalty, their loyalty should first be to the government at the center. Now, if they cannot say the governor is lying, who is Mieti Allah who say the governor is lying? This is the question. All right, uh, thank you, M. Chavel. Let's go uh, now to Enugu uh, Barista Chinwike. Thanks for still standing by. You are a lawyer. You are the founder of Afri Law. The Funam group has come out to uh, claim responsibility for the attack. This is not the first time they are in the news. Judging by all that has happened so far as a security expert, what should we be doing? Some group has come out to say they are responsible, and so far we've not heard anything as far uh, where they are. How are we going to get this particular group? But just what the security um, apparatus in Nigeria is doing. What would you recommend as a security expert? Yeah, the, to be frank with you, it's very disappointing that the IG said that he has sent that uh, crack team to Ben. To do what? Where the perpetrators have told you that we are the ones that did it. So the issue is that the ID should tell us how is, what is the plan to apprehend the, the, the association, the leadership of Puna, that said that they are the ones that did to carry out the act. That is the first thing which we have get from the, even the statement from the president. The statement from the presidency and the ID should have been, we are going to deal with this group, we are going to crack down on them, we are going to make sure that nobody is free to do anything and get away with it. But what are we seeing? No, no, no communication, no even action or reaction in this regard. So these are these things we are complaining, everybody is complaining. It means that some people are special, some groups are protected, some groups are devoted, some groups are encouraged by the federal government. That is, it, that is the implication. That somebody will do something, a group of people will do something, and they have the impetus to come out and say, we are the ones that did it. Such heinous crime. 
and the federal government, I, who has the, the mandate to make sure the security of the people is guaranteed, has no comment to make in that regard. It's very, very unfortunate. I'm telling you, it, what it means is that this group is above the law. And that is a conspiration of the Constitution of the Federal Republic. And it means that the, the, the president and those in power has failed in their constitutional duty to ensure that the tenets of the Constitution as in regard to the rule of law and respect to the rule of law is secured and protected. All right, thank you, so Mr. It's All very right. unfortunate. All right, thank you, Barista Chiwike. Let's begin to wrap up this um, segment now. Yemi, let's talk about uh, insecurity in Nigeria and the politicization of it all. Just uh, a few days ago, the River State Governor you know, was in the news and said uh, there was a time he called out to the federal government uh, for help when it uh, came to security on his, um, in his state, but he never really got some the needed response. He says uh, security situation in Nigeria has been so politicized. Can we get to a, a state, a place, a point in time in Nigeria where every state can actually handle security situations in their terrain and not having to fall back to the federal level? Well, I, I think it's possible uh, for us to achieve that. We have to think uh, and uh, rework our constitution. And if that gives room for state police or the, the vigilante, what have you, that could happen. I, I have a friend of mine now, I think he's an, he's a, he's an ACP as we speak. And he told, he lamented to me, at, at, in, during his lamentation, he said, at the point he was posted to River State as a DPU, and when it was, about, when it was just about time for him to get groomed and grounded and know the terrain, he was moved to another state. Mm. And, and that's where it is. So you probably move somebody from Igbora in New York State. You send him to somewhere like um, Patagi in Niger State to become, to, uh, to, to be a police uh, with a DPO there. Or you're moving from, from Rivers to Michika, from, mm. Soko, from Sokoto, you move him down to Ijebode. One, he doesn't know the language. There's a cultural shock. And whether you like it or not, it will affect policing. Okay, uh, we'll still uh, talk more, but uh, I just want to get the final words from our guests uh, in Benway State and, of course, in uh, Enugu State. Uh, Mr. Akase, let's uh, conclude now to get your reaction concerning the anti-open grazing law in Benway State in just 30 seconds. You, would you say that it has actually brought uh, calm and uh, peace to your state? Yes, because uh, many uh, cattle owners, many livestock owners in Benue have ranched. Uh, those who, especially those who are indigenous, have ranched their animals. The only problem is the group which has vowed never to accept that piece of legislation. That's the Mieti Allah groups. Those groups have said they will never obey that law. And that's why we keep having uh, the attacks. But largely, the law, the enforcement of the law has been very successful. And those who have violated the law, both, even if they are chief people, they are Idoma people, Fulani and whoever, they have been arrested and their animals impounded and auctioned All right, well, after, after a week. Thank you, so The law has been very successful so far. Okay, finally, uh, Barista Chinwike, uh, what would you conclude in all of this matter now in Benue State? What is the way forward? Uh, I think that the, the, the Benue people and the government should be courageous. They have been courageous. The man has been exemplary in showing that uh, his, you know, his duty is to protect the life and promote the welfare of his people. And I think that is what we expect. Every but if the duty of the government is to make sure the security and lives of the people and property are well secured, and uh, nobody, who, whatever name called, should be allowed to take the government for granted and take the people for granted. So I think it's a current call to everybody that every one of us has to be security conscious, 
and every one of us has to hold the government accountable. The government has the duty to secure the, the people and the property. And we, the people, need to support the government. And wherever that is happening, we are going to give this state support. So very big kudos to the governor. All right, and thank, the you so the thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Barista Chinwike. And we know that whoever and which, who, uh, every group... All right, thank you. Message, That's as much as we can take from your point, uh, Barista Chinwike. We do appreciate your time. All right, uh, yeah, me just, uh, let me just get your final word on this so we'll move on to the next uh, topic for discussion for the day. I think this is, a, this is an opportunity for uh, Mr. President and his, um, his NSA to, to prove to Nigeria that they can still, you know, you could expect something good out of their Nazareth. If not, uh, they've, been, they've been a monumental disaster since 2015 okay. and I don't know. Unless miracles still happen, and I believe in miracles. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we still have uh, Yemi um, Saka with us. Uh, we'll take a short break now, and uh, when we return, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will continue to recognize only the 18 registered uh, parties to contest elections in the country. Stay with us.